Hi, I'm here with Dr. Connie Kazri today, Professor of Education and Psychiatry at the Center for Autism Research and Treatment at UCLA. Um, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, so today, um, Dr. Kazri is going to talk with us about um, autism and treatment for autism. So my first question is, um, if a parent is concerned that their child may have autism, uh, what types of professionals can help them you know, get some good assessment? So I think it depends on the age of the child. If the child is very young, um, they should check with their pediatrician. Pediatricians are screening children now um, a couple of times before the age of two, or hopefully they're screening um, infants, and so they would be a good person to contact. Um, if their pediatrician doesn't seem to have any concerns, but the parent continues to have concerns, they should actually seek out um, uh, an assessment from a psychologist um, or a center for autism if they have one in their, in their area. But probably uh, almost any area now has somebody with some expertise in autism specifically. So they should really seek out that evaluation. If the child is older and in school, they should ask the school psychologist um, for a recommendation or an assessment. Before we go a little bit more into treatments that may help with kids mm -hmm. who have autism, um, can you sort of briefly describe what um, kinds of things kids would be working on? So again, it depends on the age. Autism is a developmental disorder. Uh, so it depends on age, it depends on severity. Um, if they're really young, they're working on engagement with other people. Um, some of the early pre-linguistic skills. We know that very young children are, sh are showing um, specific problems in communication and language and in social relationships. Um, they may also show some repetitive behaviors or behavioral issues. So those are the kinds of things that parents are, are noticing and that's, those are the types of, of skills or um, issues that they need to work on. When kids get older, they may also have some academic issues, um, so it's, uh, particularly around reading comprehension, for example. So it depends really on the, on the age. But I would say that social relationships continue to be an issue for most kids all the way up through adulthood. And what are some treatments for autism that are considered evidence-based? So we are actually... Um, you know, developing more evidence-based treatments, and we have you know stronger evidence for things that actually work. So right now, it's mostly behavioral interventions. So within a fairly large umbrella of applied behavior analysis, there are a number of different treatments that have an evidence base. So um, there's a variety of those treatments, and again, it depends on the age of the child and the severity. Uh, with young children, I think a developmental approach along with some behavioral strategies is probably most appropriate and has a pretty strong evidence base. Um, as children get older and might maybe need social skills interventions, there are a number of evidence-based treatments. So again, depending on um, you know, the age. It also depends on, on where you live and access to intervention. So that's a, that's a big issue that we're all dealing with. Um, the disorder is a very significant disorder. Children need a number of hours of treatment when they're young. Once they get to school, they're in school, they need targeted, focused interventions for various kinds of problems, and sometimes access is an issue. Mm -hmm. So you said they need a number of hours. Is there a recommended number of hours of treatment for young children? Well, we do have a recommended number of hours. So um, it's not based on a very strong database uh, in terms of comparing, say, is this many number of hours better than this many number of hours? But for most children under the age of eight, it's recommended that they get anywhere from 20 to 25 hours of of treatment, and that, that treatment involves both behavioral, you know, educational interventions as well as some of the therapies like OT, PT, um, and speech. So again, access can be a huge issue. So for very young children, we recommend um, teaching parents and other people in their environment as to how to help the child so that we can fill in the numbers of hours that children need. So you mentioned that these evidence-based treatments fall under a broader umbrella. I'm wondering if you can describe um, some of the things that 
a therapist who's using evidence-based interventions some sort of strategies that they would use? Mm. So in general, I think structure works pretty well for children with autism. So you want to have some structure, you want to be very consistent, uh, you want to choose goals for that child that are developmentally appropriate. So if it's a very young child, you want to make sure that you're not giving them um, skills to accomplish that might be at their age, but developmentally they're much younger. So I think we want to target them the skills more developmentally so that we don't have children who develop a lot of behavioral problems because they're frustrated. Um, for a lot of our very young children, they need to have access to communication. So however that that is, I mean, it could be through um, access to people and they're starting to develop words. It could be through some augmented system. So a lot of children use PECs or an augmentative system or an iPad. Um, there are lots of different possibilities, but access to communication is really important. So um, are there any treatments that are not recommended for autism? Yes. Um, based on the evidence, there are actually quite a few treatments that probably um, aren't, well, they're not, uh, they don't show any effect on core deficits or on uh, functioning. And some of them are actually dangerous. And so we may not want parents to engage in those things like uh, hyperbaric chambers, um, chelation have been shown to be not effective. They're also very expensive, potentially dangerous. Um, so sometimes parents try them. Um, and hopefully, you know, the child is still safe. Others that don't seem to be effective, but that individual parents may find effective for their children and that may not be harmful are things like diet, um, you know, for some children. Um, some of the sensory um, approaches may be very useful for individual children, even though, you know, in terms of a really strong evidence base, we don't see it. Um, so I think those are things for parents to consider. Are there any other important tips that you would give to parents if they're concerned about their child? Well, I think you want to seek out experts. Um, and so depending on the age of the child, sometimes your school district can be a very good resource. Certainly your pediatrician or other doctors can be um, a very good resource. So I think you want to seek out um, those resources and I think other parents. Um, who have children, so try to seek out parents who can give you some, some good tips in your location. Thank you very much. You're welcome.